Hey folks, this is JR with DIY Prepper. Welcome to the channel. You guys know that in the Prepper community, gear videos are popular. People like to watch lists of things that they should have or things that they can use for, say, cooking, outdoor survival, this, that, and the other. And those are fun. We do those a lot on this channel, but it's also important to step back and then take a look at free things that you can do. And in all reality, a lot of these free things, they're going to help you be more prepared and they're going to help you use the things that you already have more effectively. And one very good free thing that you can do is just to create a family preparedness plan. A lot of this stuff should be in a binder, preferably laminated, so if it gets wet it won't be destroyed, but just have all the information that you and your loved ones would need if something were to go down. Kind of have things pre-planned, but also have an inventory of what you already got. Things like food, water, fuel, batteries, and medications. Those, of course, they can go in a spreadsheet. You might want to keep kind of a hard copy of that in your binder. Just print that out from time to time. But for keeping track of things like how much food you got, a spreadsheet's going to be very useful for that. You also want to inventory other things. Know what kind of stoves you have, how many LED lanterns, the batteries that they take, so that when you do get some money, then you'll know what you have and where those holes are so that you can spend your money in a way that'll help you be more prepared rather than just collecting the same kinds of gear just because that's what you like. Another part of that is organizing your prep so that everybody knows where everything is but also it's accessible when you need it and if you need to get out of Dodge with it, it's going to be easy to grab and load up. And also, if you have any kits, things like bug out bags, get home bags, whatever the case may be, go through those and make sure that you haven't taken anything out of those or things haven't expired like medications. And if any of those things have happened, make sure that those items are replaced. Another really important part of a family preparedness plan is just identifying the threats that you and your loved ones are most likely to face. For example, where I live, I don't have to worry about blizzards and hurricanes all that much. But I do have to worry about tornadoes. If you live out west, earthquakes are going to be a concern. If you live in a major city that has been experiencing different kinds of social unrest, that's something to consider. And also just rising crime. Be aware of what's going on in your neighborhood. Aside from just the normal porch pirate nonsense, which I think everybody has this time of year, be aware. Are people breaking into people's cars in your neighborhood? Have you had a rash of home burglaries? Those are things that you want to know about so that you can take the appropriate steps to keep you and your loved ones safe. Then also work out contingency plans based off of those different situations. So you and everyone in your home should know what to do if, say, there's a home invasion. Somebody is in your home. Y'all need to know what everybody should be doing in that situation. Then also, if there is some sort of social unrest that happens in your area, a second ago I mentioned living in a major city, but really it can happen anywhere given the right or wrong circumstances. Your plan should also address what you're going to do if it's not safe to go home, where are you going to meet up. Also, if both you and your spouse work and you have kids at different schools, who is going to pick up which kid or which kids, and then where are you going to go after that? Then also know what you're going to take with you if you need to bug out. And I know that's a last case scenario. You don't want that to happen. But if you got to get out of Dodge, you're going to be much better off if you have a plan for what you're going to take with you. And that's already organized in such a way that it's easy to grab and go. And once you have these contingency plans laid out, it's always a good idea to practice them. Another useful thing that preppers can do that's completely free is practicing knot tying. And to do this, all you need is an old shoelace and YouTube videos. You can learn pretty much all of the important knots that you would realistically need to know. Things like the bowline, because having a fixed loop at the end of a rope is useful for a lot of different things. Also, clove hitch is a good knot to know. Sheet bend for connecting different ropes together. Then also the double fisherman's knot. And those are just some examples. And then aside from knot tying, there's other prepper and survival related skills that you can practice for free using stuff that you probably already have. One of those is fire starting. If you're using a ferro rod, one very good thing to use is 
does the back of a saw blade, especially those on the back of multi-tools, those work incredibly well for that. Carving's another good skill to practice along with foraging wild edibles, and you really want to focus on the ones that are common to your area because that's going to be the most practical and useful for you. No edible plants that you may have growing in your yard. Also, really important is knowing which edible plants have poisonous lookalikes so that you can avoid those and stay safe. Another good thing to do is to practice cooking with your food storage. We talk a lot about storing dry goods on the channel, things like beans and rice. You need to have a pretty good idea of how long it's going to take to cook that, about how much fuel are you going to use each time that you prepare a meal, so that'll help you know kind of what you need going forward. And then also, if you've stored other kinds of foods, things like, say, mountain house meals, take one of those out from time to time and just eat it for lunch to make sure that your stomach can still handle those things. I was a little bit unpleasantly surprised when I ate a pouch of lasagna a few days days ago. Um, I mean, it's, it's good to know because if I go camping, I'm not sure if I really want to be digging that many cat holes out in the middle of the desert. Another good free prep to take advantage of are different apps for your phone. And I know that paid apps are becoming more and more common. It's kind of hard to find really good free stuff, but the apps by American Red Cross, like their first aid app, and then they also have different apps for like, say, tornadoes and then other kinds of natural disasters. Those have some good information and just from time to time, if it's been a little while since I took a first aid course, I'll just kind of browse around and see, oh, what do I do if somebody has heat stroke? Just, you know, if I'm going to be going out and working with people in a hot climate, then you know, I'll kind of feel better knowing what to do if, if something goes wrong. Also, Scanner Radio is another cool app. It does rely on um, having internet access either through your home Wi-Fi or a cellular network that allows you to tune into all sorts of different like emergency service radio systems. Like you can tap into local ones and you can also kind of see what's going on across the country. And then Gas Buddy is another good app to have, especially when gas prices are all crazy and everything. But in addition to letting you know gas prices if you're in a situation where you're having to take a long trip, bugging out, even could just be vacation and you're not familiar with the area, then it can help you know exactly where gas stations are that maybe you didn't know were there. So if you're in a situation where you need fuel and you need it fast, then it can be helpful in that kind of situation. Online PDFs are another good digital resource to take advantage of. You can find pretty much all of the different military survival manuals out there available completely for free. You can just download them. And in some cases, like maybe from like online libraries, you can even find full books. You just want to be careful where you get these PDF files from because if you don't go to a legit website, of course, you can get viruses. City Prepping, he has compiled a full list of different online PDFs on his website, and I would figure that would be uh, a, more, a more legit source to go to. I mean, we all know that Chris is a pretty smart guy, and I'll be sure to link down to that in the description below. And aside from online resources, you may want to check your local library as well. You might not be able to find the latest book by Jim Cobb or James Wesley Rawls at your local library, but you can probably find books on other things like camping, maybe some older outdoor survival stuff, maybe some of the Foxfire books. Then also definitely other things like home maintenance and repair, mechanical kind of stuff. Those would be some good things to look for at your local library. Another free thing that preppers can do is just get in shape. And that is something that I need to do a better job of because I am a shape. I'm becoming more round every day. You can't tell it on camera, but my, my side profile is definitely a little bit more rotund. We'll just put it that way. But even if something as easy as taking a walk, that's going to be good. It's going to be even better if you have something like a bug out bag or get home bag on you because it's going to add a little bit more weight. And it's also going to let you know if those packs are too heavy for you to realistically carry for a long distance. You don't have to get an expensive gym membership to get in better shape. Just doing things like jumping jacks, push-ups, Sit-ups, those can all be useful things that will help you get in better shape that in controlling your diet, which is really hard because I like cheeseburgers and tacos, but 
it's probably all something that we can work on together. Another free thing that preppers can do is just maintain the gear that we already have. Instead of focusing on piling up mountains and mountains of more gear, just take care of the stuff that you got. Make sure that your guns are cleaned and well oiled. Make sure your knives are sharpened. If you have a lot of like LED lanterns for flashlights floating around the house, if there's one that you haven't used in a while, go ahead and take the batteries out so that those batteries don't turn bad and start corroding inside of there and potentially ruin that device. And one thing that's very good from a home security standpoint is if you have some three, three and a half inch deck screws lying around, then you can replace the screws in your door strike plate so that it's a little bit harder to kick in. Now, of course, something like door armor would be better. It's a, a, a much longer strike plate that's a lot harder to, uh, to kick through. But even if it's just something as simple as getting longer screws that actually sink down into the studs, that can make your home a little bit more secure. Another free thing that preppers can do is repurpose items that they already have laying around the house. A good example of that would be making a buddy burner. If you have a can that maybe some like canned meat, like canned chicken or something like that came in or some tuna, and you have some cardboard from all the Christmas gifts that you've been ordering online, all those old boxes, then just cut up that cardboard, put it in that tin can, pour some candle wax over it, then you have a buddy burner which you can use to cook. Now just be aware the flames on those can get rather large, especially if you have a larger can that you're using, so you want to be careful using that. Maybe just use it outside. Another good thing that you can make is emergency fire starters, and of course those can be made just out of Vaseline and cotton balls. You can put some in Ziploc bags, put those in various kits. You might want to double bag them just so they don't leak and get all over stuff. Uh, but also maybe put in maybe a storage compartment in your vehicle so you'll have those things if you need them. Then there's other things that you can do, like we've shown how to make a bucket toilet on the channel, and then also you could make a bucket washing machine out of a bucket, a lid with a slit, in, and then a plunger, preferably a new plunger. That might be an area where you may want to spend a couple of dollars at like Dollar General or whatever, because I'm not sure if I would want to do laundry was something that had been shoved at the bottom of the toilet. That's just me. But also another free thing you can do is just don't throw away things like condiment packets or plasticware that you get if you go out to eat or you get takeout, get a to-go box, something like that. Because I mean, things like ketchup, mustard, salt, sugar, and then even like plastic knives and stuff, they can make your life a little bit better if you're having to dip into your food storage or if you're in a situation where you lose running water, you can use that plastic wear to prevent you from having to wash things like, you know, your normal knives and forks. Now, if you want to see more examples of how you can use everyday items and repurpose them for survival, go ahead and click on this video. And if you want to see disposable items that you should not be throwing away, that you should be setting some aside to use for different prepper purposes, go ahead and click on this video. Thank y'all for stopping by. Y'all have a good one.